Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Colby and this is Misty with the Max Heavy Homestead. Uh, the whole point of this video is just to let you know why we homestead, uh, the reasons we homestead, and kind of who we are. Uh, before we talk about why we homestead, we'll tell you about our, our homestead first and our farm. Um, we sit on about five acres of a developed homestead. We have about 30 something acres, around 36 acres uh, that we have available to us on our homestead. Uh, but for us, that's just a pine thicket for most of it. Uh, but really on our five acre homestead, we have our home, of course. Uh, our animals, uh, we have five cows. Uh, one is a milking cow, a Jersey named Elsa. We also have a Jersey bull. Yeah, we milk Elsa every morning at 430. Yeah, we milk, so it, milk. We milk Elsa every morning. Uh, we have another uh, Jersey, a low line Jersey heifer that we have uh, bred with our Jersey bull, a registered miniature Jersey bull. Uh, we have other videos showing those cows, but uh, so that's really our dairy herd. And then we have um, a, a little black Angus that we uh, have as a heifer. She's really more as a companion heifer when we bought our jerseys. Uh, and then we have a little a bull. It, it was supposed to be a steer, if you notice it in some of the videos. It just didn't work out that way, but uh, he's just our little Angus bull. Um, Really, the only purpose we have for him is he, he will become a, a meat a freezer calf for us. So uh, we're growing him up to, uh, to provide for us. So that's our cows. Um, we, we've had chickens probably the longest. We've had chickens for really probably of our 12 years of marriage or 13 years, probably seven. Half eight. of those at least. So we, we've had chickens the longest. And those were kind of, that was kind of our gateway into this. It always you know, is. They, you've always heard that, but that really grown tree for us. I, I don't even really, I can't remember what drew us to wanting chickens, but we got them and we yeah. pretty much... We've had some disasters with a few herds, but we finally fixed our coop to where it was completely enclosed so we don't... And we can talk about that more when it comes to the chickens, but for chickens, we um, we did. We had some real bad experiences, but pretty much we kind of kept kept with it, and now we, we, we have a very successful um, got really hatchery with our chickens, with our layers, uh, and we're, we're diving into to meat birds hopefully very soon. But uh, we've been real pleased with them. Then again, uh, my favorite, I think, is, uh, is, is the bees. Um, we love beekeeping. Uh, it's something that we've learned uh, from our area. That's something that I would have never embraced. <laughs> my wife was always saying that's something we need to look at doing. But I love honey. I have a sweet tooth. So um, for me, I, love, I really want to know for the honey aspect. So... I finally convinced him to, to get bees. I hated honey. I, I, when someone wanted honey, I wanted syrup, you know, but uh, I guess the more we got into it, the more that we started doing research on it. I thought it'd be good because my wife wanted to do it, but pretty much I've embraced it and I absolutely love it. That's probably my favorite thing that we do on Homestead. It's, it's peaceful. It's relaxing. I think I get stung every time we go in, but it's something about it I just, I really do love. So we have... Um, we have nine, oh, excuse me, we have 11 hives. Really, of those hives, though, we have probably six active hives. Uh, we have five nukes or starter hives. So, uh, we're really trying to grow our apiary. Most of those uh, hives are here on our homestead. Uh, we do have another property that is a family farm uh, that we keep another set of our apiary on just to grow uh, a more honey uh, product and different kinds of a taste of honey. So, it's, it's up there we got them uh, uh, at another farm, and then we got most of them here. Our newest, though, is our is the pigs. The pigs. We do American guinea hog. We have a, a, a heritage boar that came from a, a breed that uh, has been a long lineage of good uh, hogs. Uh, we have a sow almost from the same breed. It was from a, a, a different uh, a different heritage breed, but they're both uh, uh, beautiful pigs. They, they they we bought them when they were piglets from Alderman Farms, another uh, YouTuber and family homestead here in our area check them out they're cool they are um, but our, our hogs have grown um, our goal I know everybody says you can't you can't be justifiable with with hogs unless you buy feeder hogs or, or fast grow feeder hogs um, we went with American guinea hogs to slower grow um, they seem more family oriented they seem like they uh, fit our farm a little bit better and we, we are our goal is to to breed those and, and use them of course to feed our family so a different approach than some. I know some choose to sell those and then only have feeder cat, uh, feeder hogs for uh, feeding their family. We just chose to do the American guinea hogs. We like them. They're small and they, they tend to fit our, our, our mold a little bit better. Um, but that's really, I think, all our animals uh, that we have. Uh, our goal is to grow some meat, meat cows more, but uh, we'll talk about that later.
in in our gardens we've always had a garden pretty much since the first year that we met have been married so uh, we've always had a garden uh this year's probably our biggest if you say our yeah. biggest um garden so we have a garden spot but we also have multiple raised beds um and then my baby is the greenhouse and i've really probably what in the past year learned how to do propagating um what what you can propagate from cuttings and what you grow from seeds so um, that really hit, was my goal last year, learned, to learn how to make plants from plants. So uh, I had a really small greenhouse for a few years, three or four years, but then this past summer, um, we built a really big greenhouse and uh, it's pretty much full. So um, a lot of the things that it's my goal over the next few years is when we start to go to the farmer's market to have live plants that I've made from my plants. Um, we have lots of herbs, um, rosemary and parsley and oregano and basil and we have chives and we have elderberry now. So if that's something new, elderberry. Um, yeah, that kind of talks about, well, she talks about uh, enjoying the greenhouse and, and kind of making seed from seed and plant from plant. Uh, that kind of talks about why we homestead. Uh, our first point is really more sustainability. Um, we didn't grow up in this, both of us. I came from a, a background that had gardens, but uh, and I knew a, uh, one of my best friends was part of a, a milking family, so I saw some of that, but we never grew up on a farm or a homestead or a, a big a ranch of any sort. Um, but that was one of the things when we first got married, we wanted a garden just because we wanted to enjoy tomatoes or a few peas. Well, that little city garden we had at that time, uh, after we we bought another home and built another home, now we, we're to where we're in an area where we can grow as big a garden as we really want. Um, for us, we wanted to figure out, okay, how can we grow fresher food to enjoy? But now that whole, that whole mindset has changed to how can we provide for our family and make sure we're sustaining and making sure that not only are we growing good food, but that we're able to understand how to keep the seed, how to provide more, how to be year over year with that same crop. Um, because if, if we can grow a great garden and don't know how to keep the seed, how is that ever going to help us for next year when there might be a seed shortage? Uh, if you look at some of the garden videos we've done before, some of those seeds that we're saving, uh, some of those seeds you couldn't get anymore. Some of them are heirlooms. Some of them are, are ones that they discontinued with, the, well, I guess, with the seed uh, companies that own those seed. So if we can learn to, to uh, take cuttings and, and do propagate like Misty's done so well in the greenhouse, but also save seed from the vegetation that we provide, that helps us have that sustainability. Same way with meat, um, the hogs, the, the steer, uh, the, the milk, all of those things that we provide off our, our meat animals, our, our cows, our pigs, even our bees with our honey. If we can learn to be more sustainable, that helps us, I think, uh, provide for our family. But not only that, know that no matter what happens in whatever environment the world puts us in, uh, our homestead is sitting in a really good spot uh, to take care of our family. Yeah, and with that being said, a lot of the things that we do that we're providing for our family, we know what's on it, where it's, um, what's been done to it, um, just the whole nine yards of uh, the freshness. Not only is it fresh, but it's clean, it's organic. Um, I don't have to worry about my family consuming chemicals and toxins. So we want to provide fresh, but we want to provide clean for our family. Um, which is another reason that we want to grow our own food and we want to provide our own meat, our own eggs, our own milk. Um, now, there are times that we still eat out and we right. still pick up snacks and we still make pies with sugar and you know all that yummy stuff too. But for the bulk of our time, we want to make sure that we're being good stewards with our bodies, we're being good stewards with the land um, that we have, and so that's that's just always been really important to us. So as she made stewardship, that's kind of our second point from sustainability is understanding stewardship. Um, we, we have five children. Uh, we believe that we need to take care of them the best we can and teach them values that we believe uh, that have made us who we are. Um, from that, we home, we homeschool our children. Uh, my wife does a great job of doing that, and then uh, uh, she has a harder job than me with taking care of them. So uh, stewardship, we believe in taking care of them. Now, as, as we talk about sustainability and putting things in our body, um, 
we also believe in doing the same thing on, on what we use for our body. So uh, even now to uh, sometimes the, the, way, the toothpaste or toothbrushes we use, uh, the soaps that we have. My wife makes a lot of soap. Um, the lotions that we use, we make lotion. Uh, even now the deodorants. All of those things we believe not only do we put things in our body, we don't realize what we put on our body. So all of those things, uh, even down to our laundry detergent. When we talk about homesteading, there's so many elements and factions, and, and all of it may not be for you, but for us, we wanted to not only be sustainable in food, uh, but be good stewards with our children. And part of that is making sure that we're taking care of them, taking care of ourselves, and also knowing what we put in or on our body. And, and I'll say this too, I can remember making that major transition and really getting overwhelmed because it is, it, for us, it right. was such a big change. So if you're at that place where you're thinking there are things that I want to weed out, pick an area, whether it's your Don't bathroom, whether it's your bathroom or your kitchen or whatever, and take um, portions and start weeding stuff out because it can become very stressful and that's not what you want. So that's really kind of our next point is the satisfaction that we get from doing what we do. Um, we love what we do. We would not have it any other way. So if you're in that place where you want to um, make those changes, don't let it overwhelm you and stress you out because it is a lot to take in. And it can become very overwhelming. So take it a section at a time. Think of what, um, what you want to change the most and tackle that first. And then kind of let it snowball. So as you learn how to make soap, master that. Like maybe set yourself a, a goal of like six months and master that soap making and then move on. All right. Our third and last point, which is probably the most important for us, is satisfaction. Uh, people always ask, why do you get up and milk at 4 or 4.30? Uh, why do you go home after a long day and get in the gardens or, or deal with animals? Uh, they always ask Misty after homeschooling, and why in the world do you go out to your, your greenhouse? And uh, like a while ago, it's it's around 8.30 here. Uh, we just got done, or Misty just went and put uh, D on our garden because some of the slugs started getting our tomatoes. So uh, people ask why we do that. Uh, it's satisfaction. There's nothing better uh, than to be able to eat our tomatoes on a sandwich or, or make the breads that we make or to use the soap that we use or... Uh, to eat the, the, the meat that we provide or, or enjoy the honey that uh, that those things have got me and the Benadryl that I've used uh, have made. So the reason we do that is because we can say, hey, these are the fruits of our labors. God has blessed us with this uh, this area to utilize, so we don't want to waste that. So it's, it's a satisfaction that, uh, that only really hard work can provide. So we enjoy it uh, more than anything, wouldn't you say? So, uh, so that's why we do it. Do what we do. We, we we are satisfied with it. There's nothing better than seeing our children out there helping us. Uh, there's nothing better to than to see uh, animals jumping around and playing, to enjoy the the nature and and, and see the values played out in our lives uh, day in and day out. So that's why we homestead. Uh, we hope this video helped you. Again, we are no way saying that we're pros in any of the things we do. We're rookies in everything, and our goal is to always learn. So. Uh, if there's wisdom that you have uh, on our on our videos, comment. We'd love to know more about even what we do. Uh, if there's questions about our homestead or things that we do, ask us. Uh, we are an open book, so we we always want you to to be able to ask anything that you want, and we'll explain it to you, or either we can learn from what you you give us on information wise. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, again, share with with people that are like minded that that you that you think would uh, enjoy this and. And most of all, we hope that you enjoy uh, homesteading yourself and, and learning ways to garden. Again, like Missy says, don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't get overwhelmed because then you won't enjoy it. Most of all, part of sustainability and stewardship is satisfaction. It's, it's biting off a little bit at a time. If it's just doing a little patio garden and raised beds or growing one tomato or having one beehive, enjoy what you do because ultimately it's going to give you a satisfaction that, that only... Uh, your hard work can provide. So more than that, happy homesteading y'all.